Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, first of all, to Don Clark, if he's here. So Don has been working pretty hard on, on putting things in, in a framework, especially for the cable industry. And last week, we also had our first call. Um, so the idea is that whatever you have heard till now in terms of the Mac or NFE or SDN, I'll just try to connect the dots. And I'll show how important the standards are. So regardless of you go for a, for a, a OEM supplied or in-house development or open source, the most important thing is we need to put things in the framework, um, then find the reference points, and then decide on what are we going to select for. It's just one slide, um, but it's an animated slide. So there are a lot of standards from Etsy uh, that I have referred to, uh, but I also try to connect them in the southbound with other standards, such as IEEE, ITF. So just to start with, this is a typical L0 to L3. Um, we can also call it X hall. So you have the, the back hall, the mid hall, and front hall. Um, usually, you could also have a two train network. You can also have a three train network. Um, now, I, IEEE 1914 um, is defining the distance and the latency clause. And this is very important uh, because in future, so if you look at the services in future, they're all going to have a specific latency requirements. So that means you need to spin your functions at a particular location if you want to deliver a particular service with uh, its own latency limit. So IEEE 1914, you can look at 19141, which defines the NGFI 2 and 1. So NGFI is the next generation front hall interface. Um, and then there is also another working group uh, in IEEE, which is 1914.3, which is defining the CIPRI and eCIPRI. They're also very important. So if you follow this, you can always identify locations in your network, uh, which could be a core and edge of the access, or just the core and the edge. And then what you do is you have to put compute powers there. So you, you might like to put your functions more at the front, but then you realize that you need a lot of compute power at the front. You also want to keep a lot of function at the core, but that's a trade-off, right? So for which kind of service, which function you want to be at the front, let's say the control plane can stay at the core, uh, and most of the user plane can, can move at the front, and so on. Now, after you put your compute power, you need to connect it to the leaf and spine architecture. So you have to connect it with your rest of the networking. And then we start with the first function, which is the VIM, so Virtual Infrastructure Manager. And that's where the first spec of ITSI comes into picture. So um, I will look at um, the I IFS, so which are the um, architecture frameworks. Um, and that, that number is specify where you can see more about this architecture, uh, this interface. So the VIM talks with your, with your NFEI, and, and that is the number that you have to refer to. The next functional block is, of course, your virtual network. Again, you can refer to a particular. So all the specs numbers are written in blue. And I'll go really stepwise just to show you how important are those uh, standard frameworks. And, and then you also need an infrastructure resident controller. Now, this infrastructure resident controller can talk to an SDN policy manager or an XMPP. Uh, but you also need SDN controller for your transport. So you need a packet SDN controller, and you need an optical SDN controller. And these two SDN controllers can then be managed by Vim, the WAN infrastructure manager. Now, why I'm going a stepwise is it's really important because a lot of time we talk of SDN controller, but we should really split them, right? We should layer them horizontally as well as split them uh, vertically so that we should know exactly for which kind of traffic, which kind of SDN controller fits in, right? So when your traffic comes from your transport, it's carried out by the transport SDN controller. When it hits your leaf and spine, it's carried out by the infrastructure SDN controller. Now, once you have these two in place, you can put a VNF, or you can also span a CNF. 
Uh, I think CNF is covered in, in the next um, presentation uh, by Randy very well. Um, he, he will talk about Kubernetes. Um, now the VNF again, uh, this is the number uh, which is for, for the interface between VNF um, and your cloud and FEI. Um, and once you have the VNF, you also need a management element management system. So this is again a lot of confusion because um, a lot of question comes in if I have a network element today, it is managed by uh, a, a particular management system, what I'm going to do when I go for an FE. For sure, you have a very well-defined EMS and a very well-defined interface again. Again, on the, on the left side, I put the reference uh, point name, and on the right side, I put the specification that you have to look at. So these are IFA as well as SLO. So if you want to just look at the interface, you have to look at the IFA. If you want to look at the protocol specification, you should look at the SLOs. Um, and then, uh, once you have a VNF, you need something to, to manage, and this is slightly different than the PNF, right? So in a VNF, you can actually create, delete, and, um, and scale. So you definitely need a VNF manager. Now again, the interface for the VNF manager is very well defined, um, along with the IFA. Um, and then you also need an interface between the VNFM and the VIM. Again, look at that spec. Now, these are all defined by its CNFE. Um, and, and then a question comes, what if uh, my whole network is not virtualized? So some of the components are still PNF, no problem. Um, and then also, you could, uh, as I said, spawn your VNF or CNF at the front hall. Uh, why? Because if you want to deliver a service uh, which, is, uh, which comes in this millisecond latency, two to three, you have to have the function here. If you want to deliver something which is under one millisecond, you have to spawn something here within 10 kilometer. And you will also have, uh, and, and for all the um, edge computing, uh, I, I would actually call it multi-access edge computing, you have um, a standard to look at, which is, so you have a GS, a specification, and you also have a GR. The GR is very interesting. You should look at the report as well, because that gives you a lot of uh, use cases and report of application of MEC in the HC framework. And then you can also span a function at, at the access. Now, uh, what if I have a PNF um, in, in the same network, uh, and I also have a VNF, I cannot do the whole virtualization on, on one shot, right? So then the next specs that comes uh, is very interesting, which is um, IETF. So you can look at the RFC if you want to know about service function chaining. Uh, that is very well defined there. How are you going to chain a VNF and a PNF, so using SFC proxy? So there you have to look at the IETF. Now, um, the next, uh, so once you chain your function, you also need to manage the traffic between the functions. So between your VNF and your VNF and PNF, and that's where the TNNT SDN controller, the third SDN controller that comes into picture, again it is connected with the SDN policy manager. So in essence, you see you have three SDN controllers. Oh, the first one picks your traffic from the beginning um, over the transport, so that's the transport SDN controller or the WAN SDN controller, and then when it hits the data center, it's infrastructure, when it passes through your virtual function is the TNNT SDN controller. Once you split, you define the function blocks, you define the references, it's pretty easy. Um, and, but you also need something which is an interface between your virtual network and your actual SDN controllers. And that's where the plugin come into picture. So you have the ML2 plugin to talk to the infrastructure SDN controller, SFC plugin to talk with the TNNT SDN controller, and ML3 plugin to talk with the transport SDN controller. And again, these are very well defined.
and then select the best. And then when all, all this is done, there are two things which are always talk that uh, probably the virtual networks are not resilient um, or, and the security issue. So again, there are two very good documents, especially for resiliency. You can look at this one. Um, and this talks of a lot of things about resiliency, including things like anti-affinity. So you shouldn't put two OMUs in the same server. Uh, you shouldn't put uh, the backup VNF on the same server. Very, very good document there as well, if you want to deliver uh, good resiliency uh, for the network. Um, and you also have for security, the, um, the SSEC. So there are from SEC 01 to I think today we have 17. And there also a lot of information are there related with security. Now, all this is again covered by, by ITC. Um, so what I'm trying to say is um, it, it doesn't matter what, what functional block uh, you go for. So you can de develop them in-house. You can take it from open source. You can take it from the OEM um, or whatever you like to do. That's not a, that's not a question here. Uh, the point here is you definitely have to build your, your layers. You, you definitely have to build your network um, uh, layer-wise. So you have to put it vertically. You have to layer it, and then you ha also have to slice it horizontally. So what goes in the core, what goes in the edge, and what goes in the access. And when you combine these four standards, so uh, the HCNFE, NFE, of course, um, uh, along with IETF and, and uh, IEEE, you have built a framework. Um, and once you have the framework, then you go on the next stage of selection of the product, um, uh, and so on. Uh, I think I'll, I'll done, I'm done with this, so any questions? Please. You have a mic, you can speak louder. Sure. It's okay, you can speak, I can hear you. I can repeat the questions here. Uh, Ray Lemaitre from Light Reading. Just wondered if you or the cable community or anybody, in fact, had actually put all this together in some kind of test facility and, uh, and run anything through it to see what happened. Well, this is a framework under consideration. So, um, and last week, as I said, Don just uh, kick-started a very interesting call. So there is a process to bring um, everything uh, under a framework, but it is not done yet. We can always find this presentation. You can take snaps or you can download it as well. I mean, I didn't add anything from my side, I would say. I mean, I just connected the dots of different standards. Um, so it's not an innovation that I have done. You just have to look to a specific standard, a specific number, and you will find more information than what I'm saying here. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Very much.